Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to give our player the ability to perform wall jumps using some basic ray casting and unity physics. Let's get started. First, we're going to need something to wall jump from. So I'm going to take this wall, I'm going to increase its Y position, I'm going to increase its tiling to make it a little, little bit taller, then I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Control D, position this one here a little bit more to the left, and then raise up so it's near the top of the screen. Put a little more that way, we'll make it a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna make this one even bigger, and there we go. What we want to do is draw a ray cast from the center of our plane to the right to check if they're hitting a wall, and if so, make them jump in the left. If they are not touching a wall on the right, we want to check if they're touching a wall on the left, and if so, make them jump to the right. The way we can do this in code is by declaring a new method, and where our grounded check returns a boolean variable, we want our wall jump check to return an integer, because what we wanted to do is get our direction. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this method get wall jump direction. And so it doesn't throw an error, I'm going to go here and say return zero because now it's returning something. Whereas here in our get grounded logic, we assigned our raycast to a Boolean variable called hit. In this case, we're just going to put the raycast itself directly within an if statement. So we're going to write if physics 2d dot raycast and we're going to look at the arguments it wants. So first, it needs the raycast starting point, which is our player's transform dot position. It needs the direction it's going to go into. This can either be vector two dot right or vector two dot left. Next, it needs the distance for the raycast. If you look here, we did half the player's height plus a little bit of offset. We can do the same here for our wall jump. And we can do this by taking our player half height variable, copying and pasting it and renaming it to player half width, and then going to this start method and copy pasting this line. And we can change this to X and say player half width is equal to our sprite renderer dot bounds dot extends dot X. Then we're going to go into our wall jump direction and say if player half width plus 0.1, that's going to be the length of our ray cast. And then finally, it's going to be looking for the layer mask. In other words, which layers is it okay for this to be hitting in order for it to detect if there's a hit. This is going to be the same as here. So I'm just gonna copy layer mask dot get mask ground. And of course, that is referring to this layer right here, which I have set up as ground. If you don't have your wall set up with the ground layer, then you would need to make sure this matches whatever's in your code. Going back here, I'm going to open up some squiggly back brackets, and I'm going to say if this raycast detected there is a wall to the right, we're going to return minus one. In other words, if it detects that our player is over here next to a wall, we want them to move to the left, which means we're moving in a negative direction. And vice versa, we can just copy this if statement and now say if we're going to detect a wall on the left, then we are going to, we're going to use a, a little bit of offset in the other direction, and then we're going to return positive one. Now, when our player jumps, we'll need to determine if the ray cast is making contact with one of the surfaces. But our update method is also starting to get a little convoluted, and we're going to be repeating some of this logic multiple times, which I don't like. In all three cases, we're checking if we're using get button down jump. I don't see the reason we should write that out three times, so we're just going to make a separate if statement for this and say if input dot get button down is jump, we're going to a call to a new method and call this private void check jump type. Now I'm gonna take this, say check jump type, and we're going to cut and paste this logic into a new method. Highlight and press control KF so it auto formats. I can delete this from here and I can delete this from here because this part of the if statement has already been checked above. Next, we're also repeating get is grounded, which is not ideal. So I'm going to just say at the top here, bool is grounded equals get is grounded. Now, instead of checking get is grounded, I can just check if is grounded. And then we can change this to an else statement, remove this get is grounded is false. And now we can check some extra logic. We don't here. also don't want, we want to remove the can double jump but we're gonna put that back in a second. So if we are grounded, we're just gonna do a regular jump 
and otherwise we're going to determine i think it makes sense if we check for a wall jump first so here we can say bool direction equals get wall jump direction and sorry that's not bool direction that's int direction if direction equals zero and just to keep this logic a little bit cleaner we can also cut and paste these lines here and we'll just put these in a new method which is called private void double jump and we'll make a new method here underneath which is going to be wall jump which is going to take in a direction so here's our double jump so we can write here double jump and call to that method and now here we can call wall jump and we can pass through the direction which we are getting from right over here and of course one more thing we need to do to make this functional is we need to add the and condition to say if we can double jump in here that only then should we perform a double jump and this should not be an else but an else if and we can say if direction does not equal zero so there is some direction then we should do a wall jump now we can go into the wall jump method here we'll be adding some force but we're going to be adding some force in a slightly different way we need to first go up to the top and we need to declare a new variable that's going to apply our wall jump force unlike our jump and double jump which only moves upwards our wall jump force is also going to move left and right left or right so in this case i think it makes more sense if we use a vector 2 variable and call this wall jump force and then we can just assign it a default value of say 4 and 8. doesn't matter we can because we'll be able to change this in the unity inspector anyway we're going to go over here into our wall jump method and we are going to declare a local vector 2 variable and we're going to call this force and we're going to assign it to that variable we just created which is wall jump force then we can take our force.x at times equals it by the direction and then we can copy paste this line over here we can remove the vector 2 dot up and just add whatever our wall jump force is going to be times our direction one more thing we can do is we can copy these two lines of code and we can put them here before we add the force to make sure that our current velocity is set to zero before we perform the wall jump I believe that's everything so why don't we go and give that a try so here we go if i jump up to the wall yes he is wall jumping back and forth but there's a few things we can do to improve this number one i can essentially just climb the wall which isn't what i want so i would say that's the biggest issue to fix and the reason this is happening is because i'm just holding right as i move into the wall which is say telling me a couple of things number one maybe our jump force in the other direction isn't strong enough but also maybe we, we don't want to allow the player to move immediately after they've performed a wall jump in this case what i think i like would like to do is assign a small cooldown to our player movement preventing our player from moving left or right immediately after performing a wall jump i'm going to go up here and make a new float variable and call this wall jump movement cooldown and maybe just assign assign it 0.2 f seconds then i'll need to get a reference to my player movement script so i can say private player movement player movement and i'll just get that reference locally here in code by saying player movement equals get component player movement there we go and just a note if you're using get component like this you'll want to make sure your player movement is on the same game object as your player jump script otherwise it won't work now within the player movement script i'm going to make a public float wall jump cooldown and i'm going to make this a public get and public set if you are not familiar with this basically if i was to declare a public variable like i am here it means that normally i would be able to edit this value here in the player movement inspector within unity but i don't want to be able to manually change this variable here in the inspector instead i want to assign a value here as to what the wall jump movement cooldown should be in my jump script and then i want to reassign that value here to our player movement script through code this way over here in in the player jump script i can now say 
player movement dot wall jump cooldown equals and now I can assign it to that variable I made here on the wall on the jump script which I think was called wall jump movement cooldown. This way I can still access this variable here through code in the player movement script but I can't access it in the unity inspect. That's why I added these attributes. Now I'm going to scroll down into my hand handle movement method and I'm just going to go up here before any of the code and I'm going to say if wall jump cooldown is greater than 0f we should return. We need to go up here and update and we need to do we need to do something else and say if wall jump cooldown is greater than 0f we can subtract it by time dot delta time so basically reduce this wall jump cooldown by an amount that makes sense we can no now go back here and try this out and i can see that let's see can i so I can't quite climb up the wall. I'm still not moving as far back as I would want. So I'm gonna up this X to about 4.5, try that out. Yeah, the double jump is still kind of letting me do it, but I mean, that's okay. That's what a double jump is there for anyway, is to give you that bit of extra flexibility with your movement. At this point, it really becomes a matter of trying out these different values and just finding something that works for you. Do you want to increase this cooldown? but if you increase it too much, it may not feel very natural with the movement. So it's something you have to be a little cautious of. One small thing I think I would like to do though is just fix the double jump itself while we're here. I personally think the double jump should not be available until your velocity, uh, your downwards velocity is zero or maybe a little bit uh, close to zero. So I'm going to also just add a third condition in here and say if rigid body dot velocity dot y less than or equal to uh we'll just say 0.1 f only then are you actually allowed to double jump that way if you're tapping space really really quickly at the initial part of your jump uh it won't get wasted so here we go i like this a lot better i'm tapping space but only kind of when i'm coming downwards am i allowed to actually double jump in the next video we're going to be hooking the player up with all sorts of different cool animations including wall jumps double jumps fall animations and so forth so stay tuned to see how we're going to do that via using a state machine